while you are doing that, let me go over to the website. I promise you guys we are going to be talking about something. In fact, I want to talk about <clears throat> scaling today. I want to talk about scaling today. And it was a lesson that I wanted to talk about. First of all, welcome to another episode of Full Transparency with Donnie Wiggins, where I let you have a fly on the wall seat to see what's happening with the life of entrepreneurs that I interview, but also to see what's happening uh, to the life of me, your favorite entrepreneur, your favorite business coach. And right now I am in the middle of like a tech crisis and um, the weekend is coming up and I need to get this handled before my team is off for the weekend. So I'm letting you this, this looks a little bit unorthodox. This is out of the norm of what we're usually having going on, but I'm letting you see me handle a situation while I'm multi multitasking because we have to get the tech issue resolved, but we also have to get full transparency done. But as a result of that, I'm going to go over some things um, to help you become a scalable CEO, uh, especially if you are like me and you have a small team to start with. OK, so let's get it. Were you able to set it? What's going on? It's not coming to the Deja account. <sighs> OK. What would Donnie do on the spot? Got it. Okay, so essentially I'm having an issue with one of my websites and I can't let this issue continue through the weekend. The problem that I'm currently experiencing is that none of the passwords through my LastPass account are working. Um, it's not being recognized by the system. So now I have to go in and... Okay, and then we just had a light nearly fall. Like, what is going on today? <laughs> now I have to go in and think outside the box in terms of, uh, did you go back to support? We got to move quick. Okay, nothing is in there. there. You didn't get an email at all. Why, what is it saying? Can you come here? Let me see. We got we to gotta get through this pretty quickly. You can just sit right here. All right, let's see. No, go to support. And where's the email? Oh, is this it? Okay, let's open it up. Let me see. Accept. Okay. And change that to support for me real quick. And the error is, there was a problem with the email address you entered. Please check your inbox for a previous invitation or try re-entering it. Okay, do me a favor. Let's try. Let's see if, um, okay, so basically it's saying you've been invited before. So let me try to remove this account completely from the company. And then let me refresh it. And if that doesn't work. Go back to your Deja email. And nothing came at all. Let me try to, this is you, right? Is this you? Or is it at Donnie Wiggins? Okay. The other thing is that we're up against the clock because the team that needs to be, that needs to resolve this gets off at uh, in about 40 minutes, okay? So we should have it sent now. Let's refresh and take a look. Not yet. Okay, I got to get to this lesson on the podcast. Um, what I'm going to do is just send them. So you have the systems information. Pull that up for me real quick. And it's going to be faster for me to just send this here. All right. So we want to. Okay. Let me see. Bring that closer. So what I'm having to do now is send them a login, send them login information direct to my company which is the last thing that you want to do. You want to always use LastPass to issue passwords. Um, hold on, where am I at? 
You want to always use LastPass to issue passwords, especially if you're issuing passwords. We're doing this. Especially if you're issuing passwords to someone who's going to have multiple passwords with your company. And if they are going to have temporary access that you need to revoke. Um, please confirm that this works. The reason is... Um, the reason is because if someone, if they're, it, first of all, it helps you reduce hacks. So if you're issuing passwords through LastPass, you don't have to worry about like your email being hacked or your cell phone being hacked or anything being hacked where people can get into your systems. The other thing is if you need to let go of an employee or if you need to uh, offboard a contractor that may have been doing some work with you or for you, you can go in LastPass and just revoke all access really easily. You don't need a whole lot of going into logging into every single system to get that done. They need this and they also need this. The problem with what I'm doing now, because we're in a rush, is I'm going to have to go in and change these passwords. You have to go in and remember to change these passwords, which is absolutely a security breach. But right now we're in an emergency and I'm, I'm on set. We're not in the office to handle this any better than what I can do right now. So this is what it is. All right. I need you to pay attention to your email um, but then also I need you to set up while we're doing this, I need you to go in and set up the community. You have my credit card. You have the American express that I gave you. Okay. Use that to set this up. Use my Donnie email to set this up and then issue them a login for that. You're going to have to go in and add a user. Just start, just, just handle the other stuff first. Let me get this out. All right, let's get it. Thank you guys for your patience and coming along with me as I knock out a fire. All right, so today I want to talk about um, becoming scalable, like becoming scalable. This is language that I'm hearing a lot right now. I have brand new entrepreneurs talking about how can we scale my business? Like I'm just getting started. How can I prepare for scale? I even had someone ask me yesterday who um, hasn't hit their first six figures yet, maybe hasn't hit their first $75,000 yet, ask how can they prepare their company for sell, right? For sale, sale, sale. And for those of you who are just getting started, I want you to do me a favor and I want you to plug out of this conversation today. This is going to be a little bit more of a higher level conversation. And I like to teach these kind of lessons, but the trouble with teaching these kind of lessons just on a on on the podcast is I don't know who's watching and I don't want people who should be just focused on getting sales, who should just be focused on uh, building a solid foundation and framework to be focusing on scaling their business, right? Because you're going to skip some steps and you're going to prolong your process because you're trying to quickly get to scaling when you don't even have a proven concept. So promise me that if you continue to watch this episode, you are an entrepreneur who has a proven concept and it's time for you to start preparing for scale, if you can see anything from what just ha from what just happened here, um, you will learn that the more valuable you are to your business, the less valuable your business is. And you guys know that I love to show you things transparently and in real time. So let me just kind of walk you through what I have going on. My business has always had a pretty small team, right? I've had assistants and operations managers and tech teams and um, customer service managers and all those things in the business. And we have been uh, we have been tremendously blessed to reach the level of success that we've been able to reach with a very small team. And I prefer a small team. I think that uh, my, my biggest goal ever that I foresee for myself so far with the team, like I'm thinking 
that I can run this thing, you know, with with 10 employees. And I'm not just talking about my one company um, now. I'm not I'm not talking about my main company now. I am talking about Donnie Wiggins as an employer for the long run, right? In, in order for the brands that I have right now to reach what they need to reach, full-time employees, I really feel like in my mind, I can get it done with 10 people. And then obviously you'll have contractors that are coming and maybe some people who are part-time doing certain things um, when we're preparing for certain campaigns or product pushes and releases, but I really believe that I could get done what I want to get done, my goals, with about a team of 10. Right now, I have a full-time team of two, not including myself. So there are three people who work full-time for my company right now. And then I have uh, a coach, another coach that assists me uh, with my student program. And I have a tech team that works by contract because, honestly, my business is the foundation of my business is so solid. We don't have a whole lot of tech things happening. I used to have a full time tech team and then I realized um, I don't have things for you to do on a full time basis. <laughs> right. We only have projects and things that come up every now and then. And these are things that you're going to encounter as you are growing in your own business like. How do I offload some of this stuff? What happens in an emergency? And I'm the only person who knows this information. Well, right now, the two young ladies that work in my company, uh, one of them is my assistant and the other is my customer service manager, but kind of not really because I'm doing something unique. Okay, I'm going to walk you guys through what I'm doing. I am building a business that works for me. And I am in my season right now of building a family business. Now, I hope that this vision works and it pans out just fine. But what I am allowing the girls to do, because they're my family, what I am allowing the girls to do is to come into the company and really get some experience. And um, I want them to get some experience. They're both recent college graduates. One is my little cousin who was like uh, my daughter, you know, growing up, I babysat her. She was always with me. We just have this unique bond. And then the other young lady is my daughter. They're 21 and 25 years old. I would like to see them come in and find uh, the thing that excites them by working with me. I would like to see them come in and really start to learn themselves, discover themselves. I would like to, you know, think that um, at some point in their future, they're going to say, wow, Donnie really was a great mentor to me professionally and even on a personal level. But when you make a decision to do that and we're, we're training uh, right now, we're in training. My daughter just graduated uh, college, maybe a month and a half or so ago. And, you know, she's she's worked for my company for the last, uh, I believe, three years is it hasn't it been about three years? Yeah, she's worked for my company for the last three years, but she worked while being a college student. OK, and Brianna has worked for my company for the last going on six months, six months. Um, but she served in the role that she's currently serving in right now at a professional level for the last two years with another company. Right. So we literally come to the table um, in person, maybe three or four days a week. And I am letting them right now experiment. They are experimenting. They are shadowing each other, doing the same jobs. Um, they are traveling with me. They are getting exposure. And that's, that's the key right now. They're getting exposure. And while I love that for them, I really do. We still have a business to run. <laughs> <laughs> we still have a business to run and we have to be sure that we are knocking out these objectives and handling everything that we need to handle so that nothing slips through the cracks, right? Luckily, I am a patient leader. And because I know how, because I, because I was a solopreneur for so long, I know how to do many of the things that will be re their responsibility to do, but they're still in training. So like that issue that just happened, I get the email right before we're set to start recording and I have to handle it like right now. 
I have to handle it like right now. They've not been trained in that area just yet to handle it on my behalf. We've been working on some other things that were more pertinent, right? Routines that happen more so every day. And so now here's this once in a, you know, in a, in a while, once in an every now, every now and then circumstance that has popped up and I have all these other things to do. I have, I have to record. I have to get ready. I have to think about what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, because I, I, I didn't know what I would sit down and talk about today. But this situation, I was going back and forth like, mm, should I teach a business lesson or should I motivate? Should I empower? What should I do? And it just so happens like literally my notebook is turned to this lesson. This issue happened. So I feel like it's meant for you. Because again, right now in my company, I am the most valuable player. And my goal is is to train and develop these two young ladies and whoever else comes to work for my team to be as valuable, if not more valuable than I am to this brand, because the more valuable you are to your company, to your business, the less valuable your business is. Well, Donnie, what does that mean? That means that it will be difficult for you to scale or sell your business in the future. Why? Because everything revolves around you. Everything revolves around you. Every fulfillment, everything that has to be fulfilled revolves around you. Every idea revolves around you. Every win revolves around you. All the losses revolve around you. And you want to get your company to the point where many of these responsibilities, many of these duties are up to somebody else, right, on the team, or somebody else can be the troubleshooter. Somebody else can put the fires out. Somebody else can answer the questions that your clients or your customers may have. Because let me tell you what's going to happen. If the business is always dependent upon you, and I know there's so many of you guys who are like personal brand, personal brand, and I love that. I respect it. But we have to make sure that we're putting parameters in place and we're thinking ahead we're thinking ahead if the business solely revolves around you and you are both its weakness and its strength here are a couple of things that are going to happen number one you're going to get so stressed out you're going to be so stressed out because every decision has to cross over your desk Every single decision has to cross over your desk. You also will not have the ability to step away from your business, even when you're stepping away from your business. Like you won't have the comfort of knowing like, you know what? I'm taking a vacation. I am plugging out. When you do that, you want to be able to plug out and know that your team can handle whatever comes up. Nobody needs to call you. But if everything revolves around you and you are both the strength and the weakness in your company, then you won't have the confidence to step away because if a fire starts in your business, by the time you get back after that two day, four day, six day vacation, the whole thing could have fallen apart. Right. Um, another thing is uh, you won't know what to delegate. You won't know what to delegate or how to delegate. You'll be flat out like terrified of delegating. Hey, hey, CEO Donnie Wiggins here, and I am so excited to announce my new mentorship group is dropping. You may have already heard about it, but I wanted to, I wanted you to hear it from the horse's mouth directly from me. My new mentorship group, Actionable CEO, for entrepreneurs who are interested in professional growth, personal growth, and financial growth. You want to learn from me. Y'all have been asking for this for the last three years, and I have finally brought Actionable CEO back to serve you. Every single week, direct mentorship from me. You will also hear from other people who are in my community that I believe will be greatly impactful to you. You're going to get behind the scenes. We're going to be spending some time together live. This is not pre-recorded. This is live mentorship. So if you are an entrepreneur and you want to be connected, feel connected, you want to elevate your brand, you want to elevate your life, you want to elevate your level of success, Actionable CEO is for you. ActionableCEO.com. See you there. Which is what happened with me with my very first hire, uh, which was my first assistant that I had years ago. My first assistant, uh, I hired because I understood that I needed someone I was stressed. I was managing every component of my business. I was the talent and the admin, right? I know some of you guys can relate to that. I'm the talent and the admin. And it became overwhelming. But because I had taken such personal ownership over, over the business, like this is how it gets done. Oh, I know how to do this. When it came time to assign tasks to her, 
I was literally fearful of assigning a task. I was scared to let go. I was scared to let go of assignments. I was scared to let go of responsibility. I was afraid to let go of decision making. And so um, it, it was harmful to me and my brand for a while. I truly believe that if I had had the confidence to delegate earlier on, right, if I had accepted the help earlier on, that my company today could be so much further along. We're literally just in the last three years getting to the point, and, and I've been an entrepreneur uh, since 2010, in this particular business since 2014, right? In the last three years, I'm really just getting to the point where team is familiar to me, where staffing is familiar to me, where uh, maybe four years, where staffing and familiar and, and team and delegation is familiar to me. And you want to start identifying. You may not be in a position right now to hire people, but you are in a position to start making note of the things that need to be delegated in the future. Because when it's time to do this hiring and it's time to start delegating, in that moment, you're going to potentially lack so much clarity, you won't know where to start. So that's why I'm always stressing the data. I'm always stressing taking notes and journaling and documentation, right? Also, if you are the... Um, if you are the strength and the weakness, if you're the most valuable player on your team, then you end up feeling stuck. You end up feeling stuck. You're like, wow, I've hit a ceiling. I can't go any further. You will be afraid to create new offers because who's going to be responsible for it? You. You're going to be afraid to accept new opportunities because who has to show up and who has to prepare? You. You'll be afraid to do something simple like, you know, um, something that happens often in, in my space of digital of, of doing digital business is maybe like a webinar or a challenge. And I know for many years, David asked me, my business partner, David asked me maybe a month and a half ago at this point, like, Donnie, why don't you do events? And all this time that you and I have been working together, um, I don't ever see you do your own events. And I looked at David and said, when? <laughs> when am I going to do events? I used to do events. Now, when I used to do events and I was heavy into doing events up until about 2018. So from 2012 to 2018, that's really how I built my business from event to event to event. But at that time, the main focus of my business were the events to build my business, right? Well, and then I start getting really heavy into, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching. And then in 2020, now we have students and, you know, we have tons of students and now we have all these components and now I have team. And it's like, you want me to bring events back? Do you know all of the logistics that goes into planning and facilitating an event? Who's going to do it? How's it going to happen? Well, things, decisions like that become easier when you have a team. And this is what helps to make you scalable. And it's not just about team. It's about team and systems and workflows and processes, meaning things that happen over and over and over in your business. You've taken the time to actually document how those things happen, why those things happen, when those things happen. And if these things happen, then this is how we handle these things. You want to document these recurring activities, these recurring issues, these recurring complaints, these, these recurring wins, so that when it's time for you to hire someone, you have training material right away. You have, you have delegation material and tasks right away. Well, Donnie, that's easier said than done, but right now I'm an entrepreneur and I just do everything. I don't know what I need to automate. I don't know what I need to delegate, right? Well, let me help you with some of these things. Um, in your company right now, no matter what industry you're in, someone can, uh, things that you can delegate, number one is um, like the execution tasks, the admin stuff, right? Meaning, um, what are the things that have to happen in order for a product to launch or a project to launch? 
What are the things that have to happen in order for the event to take place? What are the things that have to happen in order for the webinar to take place? What are the things that have to happen in order for the t-shirt to get created, right? So we've got um, design and graphics and we've got phone calls that need to be made to venues and all that stuff. These are, these are the admin tasks, right? These are things that you can delegate or automate. OK, if it's something that happens over and over and over again, I strongly recommend that you automate those things. If it's something that's important to the process, but not necessarily on repeat, that's one of those things that you want to delegate, meaning assign it to somebody else. Um, you can also delegate um, or automate things like the actual fulfillment. So. There is once your customer purchases from you, they have to receive whatever it is that they gave you money for. That's the fulfillment. So that's your coaching calls. That's the actual webinar. That's them actually receiving their physical product from you. Well, you don't have to always be the person that does the coaching calls. Maybe there's a maybe there's a component of the coaching call right now. You're trying to do all of the coaching, right? Maybe you can bring on some team that can help you coach certain parts of your framework, or maybe you can put certain parts of your framework into a course. And now that cause that client can access it on automation, right? Um, maybe you can hire a fulfillment center if your brand has grown large enough and you can move it out of the dining room in the basement to a fulfillment center that once that order is received, they handle everything on the back end front for you. But if right now it's your design to design, if it's your job to design the graphic, order the order the shirts, get the get the graphic to the printer, pick up the order, look and you know see the orders come through, print the label, mark the inventory off as you know being removed so you can keep up with your inventory getting the shipping address, double checking the shipping address, taking everything to the post office and shipping these things off, you are going to be a burnt out entrepreneur. You're going to be a burnt out entrepreneur. Okay. So when we're talking about being scalable, here are a couple of things um, that you can do when it comes to a uh, team, your team is going to help you make decisions your team will help you fulfill, your team will help you execute, and your team will help you autom uh, optimize, right? Meaning perfect things, make things better, make things more efficient, right? How can we do things easier? Now, in order for your team to be able to do that, you first, as the leader, have to be really clear about the vision for your company. What is the vision of your brand? Where is the brand going, right? What is your what is it that your brand is helping people to do? What is the vibe of your brand? Meaning what is the energy like? I tell my team all the time like um uh Brianna when I put her in group text early on when she would start when she started with the company um, she would just respond like one word. You know how these, uh, you're not a millennial. You are a, 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 a Gen Z. So these Gen Zs are on, on something completely different, right? These one word responses, we're not capitalizing our, let my daughter's really bad about not capitalizing, you know, sentences. And I had to tell her like, hey, when I put you in a group text with people, you know, for business purposes, I need you to represent the brand, the vision for my, a part of the vision for my company is that we are a, we're a direct but, but friendly brand and we're over the top friendly. So, you know, notice I always say, hey, hey, you guys. And, you know, just this is the energy that I want in my brand. And anybody who comes and works in the company has to translate that same energy because I want part of my vision is how we make people feel how well people feel working with us, how excited they feel when there's a meeting on their calendar with us. Um, these are things that are a part of my vision, right? And you have to communicate your vision, not just what you do, not just the result that you help people get. That's a part of it. That's very important. But how do we do it? How does it feel when we do it? How does it look when we do it? How do you want to feel? How do you want the team to feel? What's the complete vision for the company? And you communicate that. In fact, you don't just communicate it. You make it a part of your training process. So if you've ever worked in, co in corporate America, 
uh, at a good job, you probably received a company handbook. And in that company handbook was usually a vision statement and a mission statement. They wanted to be very clear. This is the vision. This is what I see for us. This is what I see for this brand. This is what I see for you here. But your mission is to help people do this. Your mission is to honor this role in this way, right? Identify those things, communicate it to your team, and make sure they understand it. Make sure they understand it. Um, it's also a great idea to establish some core values. Establish some core values like what does what what's the most important values to your company? Is it to be a trustworthy brand? Is it to be a brand that operates out of integrity? Is one of your um, core values professionalism? Um, like to be extremely professional and in order to accomplish this core value, we dress a certain way, we speak a certain way, we, answer, you know, is it timeliness? Is it, uh, you know, one of the core values of my brand is timeliness. That means that we respond to text messages and phone calls and emails within 60 minutes or less because that's one of the values here. What are the things, and I would suggest that you establish about five of them. What are the five core values that you want to um that you want to prioritize for your brand. And I suggest that you establish those core values and communicate those. Let me tell you why. When you begin to build a team, people come with different personalities. They come with different backgrounds. And quite frankly, they come with different core values and things that are, are that are essentially important to in, important to you are not necessarily important to them. So you want to communicate this so you give everybody an opportunity to be successful with their time spent at your company. Identify what those core values are. What are those extremely important things that if these things aren't met, if these values aren't in place, then your job might be in, in jeopardy. Or I'm not pleased with if, if we're not doing this, if customer service is trash and that's, you know, in supreme customer service is a, is a core value then it would make you unhappy. It would be embarrassing to your brand. You wouldn't be satisfied. This, If these are your triggers, if these are your values, you want to make sure that you establish them and communicate them right away. Now, these things are very important because the people that you bring on to your team are going to help you. They are going to help you execute your vision. They are going to help you accomplish your goals. They are going to speak on your behalf a lot of time. And the only way you will successfully be able to offload things from your to-do list and onboard them to their to-do list is if you are comfortable with the people that you have working for you. And if you believe in them and you trust their ability to make decisions and carry out your vision on your behalf, that is a huge piece of delegation, okay? A huge piece of delegation and you don't want to delegate to people who you don't trust or believe can actually help you with your brand. Now you'll use people or leverage people, you'll hire people and you'll leverage what they bring to the table to help you carry out the vision for your company, to help you make decisions, to help you um, accomplish some of your goals. You will also utilize people um, to help you execute, right? Uh, certain tasks, but not only will you utilize people to help you execute certain tasks, you can leverage systems to help you execute certain tasks as well, right? You can leverage systems to help you with execution of certain tasks. You can utilize systems to help you um, automate not just execution, but also automate like fulfillment. You can use systems to actually help you dig down into the data so that you can uh, optimize the company at, at a better level, like you'll have a, a clearer view utilizing systems because your systems are not just technology, but right now I'm speaking about technology. What are your, um, what are your CRM? What systems are we using to execute or fulfill in terms of like uh, your website, your CRM, which is your, your customer or your client relationship management system, right? Or how are we, leveraging systems for payments? How are we leveraging systems to print shipping labels? How are we leveraging systems to track inventory? How are we leveraging uh, systems for any of our deliverables and execution? This is where automations start to play a, a role. You get your correct systems in place, you integrate them together, meaning you may have a CRM that needs to communicate to your payment processor, that needs to co uh, communicate with your fulfillment center. 
you'll have to integrate these things together. But the strategy behind how you integrate those things will determine how well you um, can automate a thing or not automate a thing. And I, I recommend that anything that has to happen over and over and over and over again, we figure out how to automate. Okay, we, we figure out how to automate. I typically focus on automating things that impact my customers first. This is important. I like to make sure the end user, meaning my customer or, or my client, has a very user-friendly experience. Anything that they have to do when they receive the final product, they don't know if there's chaos on the back end. They don't know that there's a tech issue happening because it's none of their business it's, and, it's, and it's not their problem. We don't want to be so focused on the automations and the fulfillment and the systems internally that we are neglecting the end result for our customer, right? For clarity, both things are important. Both things are important. But if you are an entrepreneur who, like myself, started off just kind of winging it, started off winging it, and you start to grow, and you realize, like, wow, I need to put a system here. I need to automate something. Sometimes you might be like me. Like, I was growing in my business, and I didn't even know what a system or a delegation or an automation was. That language was so unfamiliar to me. I was just doing the work. That's all I knew how to do was to keep my head down and do the work. And I just, you know, one, at one point started to get overwhelmed with all these tasks and doing the same things over and over and over again. But I wasn't even familiar with the language 12 years ago of automation, right? I, I, I knew delegation, but I didn't know what integration and automation and all these, these things were. And when I learned about them, I believe I took a keen interest because it was so freeing for me. It was so freeing for me and it helped me to become so much more efficient in my own brand that I'm like, everybody needs to hear about this. Everybody. And maybe I'll do another episode um, that's strictly talking about integrations and automations. Okay. Maybe, maybe I'll do that because it's, it's so freeing. You will be more effective. Your team will be more efficient. Your customer will get better results. Like, you will be you'll be putting yourself in the position to if not scale right you'll be putting yourself in the position in the position to scale or actually having the ability to scale your business once you learn those key integration automation delegation these are three components that you absolutely must have to have a scalable brand okay so um when we're talking about optimizing how do we make things um better how do we make it more effective more efficient uh cleaner right you're going to utilize people you're going to utilize systems this is where you spend a lot of your time on the optimization part because you're going to need to optimize internally you're going to need to optimize externally meaning you're going to you're going to have to optimize how the team is performing, right? And you're going to have to optimize the end user's experience, consistently making things better. And so this is where we do things like create SOPs or standard operating procedures, documenting how a task is done, documenting how a result is achieved, documenting things like how are emails responded to, but not just how emails are responded to because there are a ton of different emails you can get in your company. It could be something like, like for example, my um, my optimis my delegation board, I want to pull up exactly what we have here, so I'm telling you the truth, but I have all of my recurring, say, emails. I have a whole SOP board. And I like to use a system called Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O, um, to do that. I like to store all my things on Trello. And I am going to show you. Now, don't pay attention to all my tabs and stuff that are open. That's none of your business, okay? But let me see. Do I have anything here? 
Hey, hey, are you a service-based entrepreneur that helps your clients or customers get some type of result, but you're struggling to post and communicate your message on social media? You don't know how to type a caption that connects and gets people's attention and converts them from just someone who's following you on social to becoming your customer or your client? Great news is that's my superpower. So I'm sending you three text messages every single day, excluding major holidays, directly to your phone of exactly what you need to post to get people to buy and convert them into clients and customers. All you have to do is join my program, Post to Paid, and you can do so by texting the words Post to Paid to 404-737-2767. And the best news is just $37 a month. So hurry up, send me the text. I'm looking for it now. That can't be seen. <laughs> okay, so this is my dele my delegation board um, or my operational board in Trello. I know that you can't really see like the tabs and the details of it, but you can zoom in on your device that you're looking at. And I have all of the things that happen in my company. Like we, I'm so organized. And right now with with my team, we're focused heavily on handling things that I have going on right now. Like they came at a time where, you know, speaking engagements are at an all time high, um, just bought a new building and we're, we're, we're working on that. And um, coaching clients are at an all time high right now. We got students coming in, you know, just about every day into the business. And so we're working on things right now and they're really helping me get those things together. But where everybody should start is, with your operational board, learning how your company works. These are all the things that happen on a daily basis or on a regular basis in my company. And this continues to go on and on, but I'll share some of the things that's um, with you, that's, that's here with you. So uh, I have my beginning of the day. I have my, I have tabs, so I can't see and talk at the same time, but like this is my admin tab. This is my sales team tab. This is my fulfillment team tab. These are my emails that could belong to any of the teams. And we've got these things figured out. So on my admin team, uh, we have a beginning of the day checklist. What are the things that need to happen at the beginning of the day? Then we also have an end of the day checklist, right? And these are things that we have to train on so that we're not forgetting to check, you know, people will forget, they get busy, they get overwhelmed, they get a phone call, they get interrupted, all kinds of things happen. So I am reminding the people who handle admin that at the beginning of the day, you are required to, uh, let's say a couple things, check your email at the beginning of the day. Um, you are required to send in, this was the beginning of the day. You're required to like do things like check your email at the beginning of the day, identify what, the hot, hot item tasks are, meaning the things that have today's deadline, going ahead and identifying those things. We may have to pull some beginning of the day reports. Whereas at the end of the day, it's a reminder to, again, check your email before you leave. Uh, send an end of the day report directly to Donnie. Uh, maybe get with the sales team and get the final sales numbers. Like there are things that, so nothing is forgotten and we can operate consistently and in excellence. These are things that we'll have to be trained on so that the team knows how to function. It's the same thing. Every department, the admin team, the sales team, the fulfillment team, the social media team, everybody has a beginning of the day and an end of the day check-in. But I also have things figured out like down to my email templates. So because I offer a digital course, one of the biggest uh, customer service issues that we deal with, um, not on a daily basis, and I don't even think that it happens often, but uh, we don't get like a whole lot of customer service complaints. But one of the biggest ones that we would get is that they didn't receive, uh, a student did not receive the login to access the program that they purchased. And it's usually a user generated, you know, error. Maybe they input their email address incorrectly. Something didn't transfer over, but sometimes it's like a tech team thing, right? Sometimes it's a tech issue. Sometimes an automation has failed. Sometimes one of the things that triggers the automation has failed. Anyway, when we receive that email, there is a way that I want you to respond directly to that email. And I have that all figured out. Like they just click on the email to open up the exact language that I want them to use uh, 
in this email. So, and there's instructions to this. So I let them know, hey, if the email is related to customer not receiving their digital product or login, then I let them know these emails are responded to on the same business day between the hours of 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Sunday. We answer those emails seven days a week, right? Emails received outside of these times must be replied to during the beginning of the day check-in. And it referenced C, beginning of the day check-in and your SOPs under the admin tab. Like I'm that detailed. And then it says, use the following instructions to resolve the issue. I tell them upon receiving the email from the customer, I'm giving y'all an SOP right now. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I want you to copy that email directly from the email address that the company sent. Then we want to go into our payment processor and locate, make sure first we've received the payment. Okay. Usually we're able to identify the problem right away because if we're copying, the reason that I don't want them to type the email is because I don't want them to make a user error. So copy their email directly from the email that they sent you, go over into the processor and see if we even have that email on file. That tells us right away that there was an issue with the email and then there are instructions. But when we find out what the problem is, I also have all of the scenarios, scenario A, B, or C. Only three things could possibly have happened. And I have gone in and identified what those three things are that could possibly happen. Usually is they entered the email incorrectly or they thought their payment went through and their payment didn't go through or they need to check their junk folder. It shows that the email was sent on our end. Whatever the scenario, I have gone in and written out the email. This is what this email needs to look like. This is what it needs to say. Why? Because per the vision for my company, here's our mood. Here's our energy. Here's how our customer must feel when they receive communication back from us. They're never going to get somebody who's frustrated. You're never going to get a frustrated person from not my customer service team. Why? Because everybody has gone through the training. Everybody understands the vision. People are reminded of that regularly. I've documented everything and how I expect the mood to feel when responding. What are the, what are, what are my standards there? Right? So that's a, nobody has to contact Donnie and say, Hey Donnie, such and such didn't get their email. What do I do? That's not scalable. We can't scale that. We can't scale me having to make every decision, but we can scale based on the SOP. Now, now I can bring in 10,000 students. And if 2000 of them, if I brought in 10,000 students and 2000 of them didn't get their email and everybody had to come to me to get the proper response, it would be an administrative nightmare. But because we have this figured out already, it would be easy to resolve because we've now got it, an automated email with a delegated process. Understood? All right. So a couple of things. Um, integration, delegation, automation. You want to scale. Those are the three components that we need to heavily be focused on. Integration, automation, delegation. Now, if you want me to do episodes like dedicate an episode to each of those things, let me know. Or if you just want me to do an episode where I talk specifically about um, specific systems and specific, specific integrations. And maybe, Donnie, show us what kind of integrations you have in your own business. If that would be helpful to you, put it in the comments uh, below so I can see that that's information that you need to have. Because I, I, I get it. I was there. I understand that sometimes... You don't know what to integrate. You don't even know what integrations are available. You can integrate things that today still blow my mind. I have been um, highly focused on systems for the last four years, and there are still things that I find out that you can integrate and automate that blow my mind to this day. So you may not, you may not even uh, understand the power of integration and automation, but in order to scale, you cannot scale your one-on-one -on -one decisions. You cannot scale if you have to solve every problem. You cannot scale uh, usually by yourself. Usually you can't scale by yourself. Some people are really, really talented. But for the majority of entrepreneurs, you will not be able to scale by yourself. And you don't even want to scale by yourself because scaling means that you are you're doing more, you're, you're fulfilling more orders, you're getting more clients, you're making more money, and you don't want that responsibility without automation, integration, delegation. I promise you, you don't want that, okay? Now, 
how do you know if you are ready for these things? Um, one, you want to identify, number one, can you afford to scale? Because scaling isn't free, right? These systems, this automation, this delegation, this integration, this sounds like subscription costs. This sounds like contractors to help you set these things up, uh, their fees, their retainers, and this sounds like salary and payroll, right? Can you afford to scale? Is it necessary for you to scale right now? Are you getting enough business right now that says, I need to automate and delegate some things? If you're getting one sale a day and, uh, you know, one sale every now and then, this is not what you should be focused on right now. You should be focused on, focused on stabilization, not automation, not delegation, <laughs> not integration, right? Stabilization. Um, also, do you have the capacity and the ability to actually focus on creating systems? I heard someone say one time, never throw, uh, never throw good people at broken systems. And that's very powerful. And that's a mistake that a lot of entrepreneurs are making. You can hire the most talented people. You can hire five people right now and give them all these fancy titles and pay them top dollar or whatever, but if you don't already have systems in place for them, if you don't already have the tools that they need to be successful, it's going to be a waste of their time and a waste of your money, okay? So do you have the capacity and the ability to scale? And also, are you in a business that you actually want to scale? Believe it or not, not every business owner wants to scale the thing that they're working on right now. Don't forget, some of you are building businesses that were just stepping stones, just a just a just a just a stepping stone to get you to another idea. So don't feel like the business that you're in right now, you absolutely have to scale. Some of you are not prepared to manage or to accept the responsibility that comes along with actually scaling a business. And that is OK. But for those of you who are optimization, delegation, automation, that's the zone those are the focuses. Those are the three pillars that you need to be focused on for the ability to scale your business. And I believe that this needs another lesson. Like there's so much more. I have so many more notes. There's so much more, but I think we are we did good. We can start here right now. Optimization, automation, integration. Let's get it. This has been another amazing episode of Full Transparency. If you guys like when I actually teach business lesson. Like I know that you guys like the interviews. I know that you need the motivation, but if the actual business lesson applied to you today, just let me know in the comments, like Donnie, this applied Donnie do more of this. Donnie, this is what I needed. Donnie, these are the questions that I needed answered. I feed off of your energy. I come back every single week and give you what you tell me you absolutely need. Um, super excited because also uh, my mentorship group is dropping. My mentorship is dropping. By the time you see this, it will uh, it will either be dropped or dropping in the next couple of days. So the link is going to be right here. Y'all, I am opening up the floodgates with opportunities for you to be able to work with me. I heard what you said. Um, you know, my coaching comes at a high ticket. And everybody doesn't have the opportunity to work with me in that space. And because I started off in the space of working with beginners, because I started off in the space of working with entrepreneurs who were just on their journey, um, I wanted to make sure that I always have an opportunity. This podcast, the Social Proof podcast, the content that I spend a lot of time working on on social media, those are all opportunities to learn but I'm really excited about Actionable CEO. I'm really excited about this mentorship group. It's Actionable CEO, uh, a community of people who want to grow personally, professionally, and financially. You want to be mentored by me. You want to be in a community of people who are on the same page or a further along page as you. You want to get to the raw information and you want to get the actual things uh, that I am doing and people like myself are doing to actually be successful. You want to be connected. You want to plug in. You want to feel the energy. You like my energy? Come get some. ActionableCEO.com. Also, if you are 
a, a aspiring or existing coach, consultant, course creator, and you need to develop your idea, sixfigureedu.com. If you are just unclear about how on earth you can work with me, you just you just like Donnie, there's a lot of things that um, I need help with. There, there, I don't know where I am in my business. Just schedule the strategy session. We will point you in the right direction. The word six, S-I-X, figure, E-D-U dot com. Schedule a free strategy session. Make sure you watch that training video first. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question about it. And we'll hop on a call and we'll see the best way for us to work together. All right, I will see you next week on another episode of Full Transparency. Bye. (laughs) 